Hello everybody, welcome to part two of the Villeman K7102 metal detector build. Um, in the last video we just threw on the resistors and the capacitors here, and now we're just going to uh, finish up with the rest of the components, um, and then there will be a jump cut, I'll put the coil together, uh, solder it into place, and we'll play around with it. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to the transistors. Now they're just they're all three the same thing, so there's no need to keep track of which one is which. Uh, they are BC547 uh, NPN transistors, I believe. Let me make sure that that's the correct thing to be saying. I've got my transistor tester off, off screen here. Yeah, that's an, that's an NPN transistor, the BC547. Now, the uh, TO92 package, that's what this shape is called. It's kind of got a D shape, so we'll... Uh, Go ahead and line that shape up with the shape on the board. Just like so. Uh, transistor 2. I'll slide that in like that. And then transistor 3. Making sure we're lining the packages up correctly. They hold themselves in rather nicely, just friction, and we'll go ahead and solder those joints on. Oops. Meanwhile, my soldering iron has shut itself off. That's interesting. I'll have to change the uh, sleep modes on it. I'll wait for it to come back up to temperature. It's a very fast heating soldering iron. It doesn't have a lot of thermal mass, which can make soldering onto a ground plane a little challenging, but it does have the advantage of the heater core being right up here in the tip, so it does heat very, very, very fast. Uh, hopefully, in the near future, once uh, funds permit, I'll order in the style of tip that I actually like. I don't like these conical tips. Um, I much prefer the, the round chisels. Uh, they're really nice um, for soldering on to ground planes because you can get a lot of surface area of the iron onto the pad. Anyway, let's just crop those leads off now real quick. All right, there's that going on. All right. The next thing is just going to be an LED, and as we've always talked about before, uh, the negative lead is the one with the flat side here, or the shorter lead. Although sometimes with LEDs, uh, the, the lead lengths are reversed. So one way to make absolutely sure that you've got the polarity correct is there's sort of an anvil-shaped uh, part inside the LED there. I wonder if I can get close enough here to show it. There we go. You can sort of see a little bit of an anvil shape there on the, the right hand side of the LED. That is the negative side of the LED as well. Uh, but in this case, uh, they just have the shape of the LED on the board, so we'll match the flat side of the LED up to the flat side of the silk screen there. We'll socket that right in there. And just flow those solder joints on. There we go. Alright. Next thing to add on is going to be the trim potentiometers. Now from a cursory glance at the circuit diagram, I believe these are used to tune the resonance between the two coils. Oh, uh, We'll talk about the science of uh, metal detectors when I do the circuit analysis. Uh, it looks like these are going to require a little bit of fiddling to get into place nicely. So what I'll do is I'll just flow solder onto one pin of each potentiometer. And I'm going to apply pressure on the, on the potentiometer while reflowing. And you might have heard that little click. That's the potentiometer seating nice and flush onto the board once I've 
reflowed the joint, then once that joint solidifies, it holds the potentiometer flush to the board. We'll just go ahead and flow the rest of these joints here. There we go. Some big pads on this other potentiometer. Alrighty. So there's that in place. What's the next thing? Well, next thing is the push button switch here. Uh, we're starting to run a little long here, but uh, that's all right. Uh, the switch is all loose and floppy, so we'll do the same same technique with the switch as we did with the potentiometers. Flo we'll get solder flowing on one pin. And then make sure it's nice and flush to the board. There we go. And we'll just flow the remaining pins. Looks like one of these pins isn't even used. But that's alright, we'll flow solder on anyway just to uh, make it so it's nice and mechanically, well mechanically attached to the board. There we go. Alrighty. Oh, hey, I'm kind of dumb. I looked at the uh, what time of day it was, not the video runtime. I wonder how long the other video was. I was like, oh, it's been 17 minutes. I have to stop now. Uh, but it probably was much less than that. Okay, so uh, the next thing we're going to do is um, solder on these uh, this 9 volt lead here. So I'll just. Uh, Poke those wires through on the appropriate polarity. We'll go ahead and flow them on. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to unplug my soldering iron here, and uh, there'll be a, a jump cut here. Um, no time will pass for you, but probably quite a lot of time is going to pass for me because I'm just socketing this uh, little adjustment pin here. But um, I'm going to build that uh, coil off screen there and uh, come back and the kit will be finished. So uh, we'll see you after a brief jump cut. All right, so we're back real quick. Um, I'd taken down all my camera stuff, so pardon the slightly shaky camera, but uh, I finally gotten the coil winded. This was actually quite a project. Um, I'll go into, well, I'll actually explain how I did it uh, right now. Um, what I did was I started by super gluing one turn onto the end of the coil here, and then I wound 43 turns on, so that's for the primary. And then for the secondary, because it needed 120 turns, I didn't really have enough room to do 120 turns neatly. So what I ended up doing was I superglued one turn as before, and I did 41 turns out. Then I did 31 turns... actually, I started on this side. I did um, 41 turns in, then I did uh, 40 turns back, and then I did 39 turns back again for a total of 120 turns. So if we actually plug this into my little doohickey here, bear with me a second. So we'll click that and do do do. It says that's 0.56 millihenries, which is actually pretty decent coil there. So uh, sorry for the lens shine on that blue light. That's really quite intense, isn't it? Um, so if I quickly plug this in, flag grabbed on there. Yep, okay, so we'll do the test again. And it comes across as a 0.08 millihenry uh, inductor. So we definitely have um, working coils. Um, oh, and by 
when I finished winding the whole thing, I put another dab of super glue there, and then I put a light coating of super glue across the whole thing just to make sure it held together very nicely. Anyway, so um, that's the coil finished. Uh, there will be another jump cut, and then I'll have my system or my filming setup done properly again, and we'll see the um, the metal detector in action. So we'll be right back. All right, and we're back. Um, some time has actually passed, but it's finally finished. Um, unfortunately, there isn't any time lapse of me wrapping the coil here. Um, I had meant to, but um, I didn't set it up correctly, and it only took a single picture. So there won't be any time lapse of me wrapping this coil. Uh, but as I already explained, I just took some super glue, secured one end, wound it down. Um, this side has 43 turns, although it says 40 turns on the uh, uh, PCB there. Um, it said 43 in, in the instructions. Um, and this side has 120 turns, which I accomplished by as, again, super gluing one end to the core here, winding it out to 41 turns, uh, putting a dab of glue on it, waiting for it to harden, uh, doing 40 turns back, gluing it again, and then doing 39 turns back again. Uh, but I already explained that. Um, you don't have to wind them this neatly, but um, I'm a bit of a neat freak, so I did it as neatly as I could, and I believe they came out quite nicely. So now comes the part, and I'm going to move, uh, actually I have to hold on to this for a second, now comes to the part where we calibrate and test the metal detector. Um, so the instructions say we need to take RV1, which is this uh, little, little potentiometer, and turn it fully clockwise, which it already is. Uh, then we need to take uh, RV2, which is this one, and turn it all the way anti-clockwise, counterclockwise. So that's that done. Then you take and push the button. You'll see the LEDs lighting up there. We want that to actually go out. So we're going to take this uh, little RV1 and we're going to start turning it counterclockwise until it goes out. And if the circuit works the way I think it does, it should actually cut out very quickly. It should just be sort of an instantaneous boink. Yep, there we go. There we go. Alrighty. Alright. Now, the next step is to take uh, RV1, which is the big potentiometer, and start turning it counterclockwise until we get just a little bit of illumination on that LED. So, I'm not too sure if it's going to show on the camera, but we've got it very dimly lit right now. So, now we want to test to see if it will actually detect some metal. So I'm going to take this screwdriver here, and I'm going to bring it in towards the metal detector, and you'll notice it starts getting much... It actually starts brightening up at quite a fair distance. Let's turn this down just a little bit more. It starts lighting up when I'm a fair ways away, and then it gets brighter very suddenly as I get very close. Um, so it even gives you a, a decent reading of, of your proximity to the metal by way of the LED getting brighter. Now we're actually starting to build up a bit of a magnetic field inside the, the core of the coil, so we have to keep recalibrating as we use it, but there we go. So. I poured over the schematics for this, and I'm not 100% confident on how this particular circuit works. Um, my theory is that we've got the larger coil, this will be the transmission coil, uh, set to a certain frequency of oscillation uh, by the capacitor and the transistor and uh, various resistors here. So it's charging and discharging, so it's making a oscillating magnetic field. When we're adjusting uh, RV1 here, uh, this sense coil, we're setting it to um, basically ignore the oscillations of this one. Um, it is also uh, 
containing an oscillating magnetic field um, done by another one of these transistors and this capacitor here. And we're basically trying to cancel out uh, the magnetic field being produced by this one with this one, so they're zeroed out. Um, and as we bring a metallic object into those oscillating magnetic fields, it changes the frequency um, of the sense coil, which um, then turns on a transistor and then turns on the LED. Now that's the way most metal detectors work. This one's a little unusual. Um, uh, most metal detectors I was looking at online um, either use 555 timers or proximity ICs or purpose-built uh, PIC controllers. Um, I didn't find a lot of information on metal detectors done with, with three transistors, so that's how I think this works. Um, if anybody who knows more about it wants to let me know in the comments below, uh, go ahead and do so. Um, also, uh, click this link here to... Ooh, am I on the camera? Uh, click this link right here to subscribe to my channel. Uh, that's very important with changes that YouTube has made. Um, click over here for a video that YouTube thinks you'll find interesting. And click over here for the uh, playlist for this if I do it in multiple videos or just um, something that I pick that I think I think you'll find interesting. And also consider supporting my channel here on Patreon. I've started a new series called Back to Basics, which uh, Patreon or patrons get first, um, and then I release on YouTube one week later. So uh, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.